people like to welcome Ms. Kathy Brock with Ama Waterways. How are you doing, Kathy? Thanks so much for having me. What a, what a lovely way to spend an afternoon. So I look forward to sharing you some ideas and all. Uh, my buzzword for the months of April and May, and I guess we're going right into June on this one, is the word beyond, okay? That's where we need to be thinking, folks. We need to think beyond this insanity. What do we want to do when we get beyond this? Where do we want to go when we get beyond this? And who do we want to go with? If there's ever a time we've learned to appreciate family and friends, it is through this. So I'd encourage you to start making some plans. You don't have to nail it down tight with Alma Waterways. Uh, it's a $400 deposit, nothing else due until 90 days from sailing. So you can reserve something all the way through 2022 and not have to worry about it. But let's get it on your calendar and make a plan. So I have to introduce you to river cruising into Alma Waterways. I know we're going to focus uh, a bit on the Douro, which is the fabulous Portugal coming up here uh, towards the end, but I've got to do, go through the steps at the beginning so you're familiar with river cruising and with Alma Waterways. That means I always have to start with the rivers. The rivers are where civilization grew up. Let's face it, if it had rained for six days in the Middle Ages, they weren't going to move in a wagon or a carriage from one place to another, but they could always move on the rivers. So literally, the river banks of these rivers is where civilization grew up, starting with little Celtic settlements, but then grow to uh, villages, then grew to towns, then those grew to cities. That's why you have these fabulous cities that line the riverbanks of the rivers of Europe. That's why when we pull into a city or town, we're literally able to walk off the ship because we're typically in the middle of everything. We're able to do walking tours or we include hiking tours. We include bicycle tours. All those are guided and culinary tours. All these are included as well as our walking tours that are by pace. So one day you feel like being a regular walker. The next day you feel guilty because of that pastry chef and want to go with the active group. And then the next day, hey, I met some folks. That, they're going with the gentle group. I'm going as a gentle walker today. So what happened in 1992 is the gentleman who first wanted to connect the rivers was a guy by the name of Charlemagne but it took a while for engineering technology to catch up. There's a Rhine River, where's the Rhine? Oh, the Rhine's up here, coming into the North Sea. But the Danube's way down here, you know? The Danube goes through all of these countries down here, but they were never connected until 1992. They constructed this mine Danube Canal, covers 106 miles long, changes elevation by 1,300 feet, uh, built like stair steps, you go into a lock, you go up in every lock until you reach the Continental Divide, and then you go down the other side. So this is what connected the rivers. So this is what really gave birth to river cruising. Prior to 1992, you had to stick to one river to, with the, uh, or the other. Now, with the advent of the Mine Danube Canal, these rivers are all connected from up here at the North Sea, through 15 different countries, all the way down to the Black Sea. So this is what has given rise to the river cruising product, uh, initially because of one Rudy Schreiner, who I'll introduce you to. Also, three wonderful rivers in France. Once you look towards France, think about the Seine. The Seine goes out to the Normandy beaches from Paris. It also has another itinerary that's gonna include St. Marlo and Mont Saint-Michel which is that beautiful island with the cathedral at the top. The Rhone River, which is uh, the Rhone and the Saone, actually uh, Burgundy, Provence, think lavender, think sunflowers, think Vincent van Gogh and all of his paintings. That's Provence and Burgundy. Little box over here on the estuary coming off the ocean. This is the Bordeaux region. If you're anywhere interested in wine, you have heard the word Bordeaux a lot. 
So this is the reason these are the areas the Bordeaux wine comes from. Uh, it can be a very wine focused itinerary, but we also have other excursions uh, for and folks that are not winos. And of course, what y'all are looking at is the fabulous Douro River down here in Portugal, which is the oldest wine region in the world. Some of the most fabulous scenery and foods and wines that you will find anywhere, you'll find along the Douro River in Portugal. So quick intro to river cruising has to include my quote from years ago that oceans are going to take you to countries, but only the rivers are going to take you through them. You're not going to come in on a big ship and get to Vienna, Prague, Strasbourg, Heidelberg, Cologne. You can't get to any of those places because they were built on the rivers. So the rivers is where civilization grew up. So here we have the wonderful little town of Dernstein on the Danube with our ship in the forefront there. Um, blue Baroque tower, red tile roofs everywhere, vineyards that are so steep, it's only gonna be hand harvesting. And this lovely castle ruin up here, uh, which actually where Richard the Lionheart was held for ransom on his way back from the Crusades. And one of our hikes takes a trail up the side here. We always, with the hikes and the bike tours, we send out two guides, one at the front and one at the back. We'll always tell you how difficult it is, how long it is, so you can decide whether or not to do it. So all of these included, we will average between um, four and six excursions in every single port. Very, very different. Some advertising you might see on television that has these beautiful pictures and this tagline that says, an excursion is included in every port. I don't know about you, but uh, my definition of the word an means one. That means everybody goes on that one excursion and your groups are gonna be much larger, 30 and 40, as a, are opposed to hours of 15 to 20. Family owned, that's the key word with AMA Waterways. We started life as a company by the name of Amadeus Waterways, as in Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Uh, but the computer system in the travel industry had a few very alert lawyers that advised that we couldn't be Amadeus Waterways. We were naming ships Amadagio, Amalegro, Amicello, and actually, ama is the Latin derivation of the word love. Amo, amas, amat. So that's where we got our name, Ama Waterways. We are not AMA Waterways. That would be the American Medical Association. So three families started Ama Waterways 18 years ago, and to this day, totally own, operate, and control this company. This is a small family-owned company with no big corporate mentality no huge levels of management. Kelly or Michael can reach out to any of one of these three people by phone or by email, and I guarantee you they will get an answer. Gentleman on the far left's name is Rudy Schreiner. Rudy was actually the first president of Viking River Cruises, which you may have heard of, and vice president before that in 92 of another river cruise line. He's pretty much known as the godfather of river cruising because he actually invented something called the French balcony. The French balcony uh, was the signature cabin design for years, and I'll show you one of those in a few minutes. But he's from Vienna, Austria. He's an architect. He designs our ships. He designs our itineraries. To his right, the lovely Christine Karst uh, came from Dresden, Germany. She has this wonderful story of how she's now lived half her life in freedom and half her life behind the Iron Curtain. I call Christine the heart of Alma Waterways. She's just absolutely a very special person. If you ask Christine to describe her river cruise line in one word, she will use the word home because that's what we want our ships to be home for you when you sail with us. And you also become part of the Alma family. On the right, gentleman's name is Gary Murphy. Gary and his dad, Jimmy, owned Brendan Vacation for years. Uh, Jimmy was the third partner, those uh, 18 years ago. 
Jimmy's got another wonderful immigrant story. He came over on a ship from Dublin, Ireland with $50 in his pocket, made his life over here, raised his family. And of course, Gary came into the business with him with Brendan uh, Tours. So he's the third family. We lost Jimmy a few years ago, but we have Gary as that third owner. Now, we will have all kinds of safety requirements when we get back on the river, which hopefully will be August, if not for sure September. Um, we will have requirements for our guests. We will have requirements for the crew, the staff, the hotel service staff, everyone. We will also adhere to wonderful food safety requirements. Now, we've never been a company that's been big on buffets. That's not what we do. Our breakfast has always been served and champagne to go with it for a mimosa. Our lunches have been served. We've had a salad bar, but that'll be gone for at least a while. And then we have served five course dinners with paired wines. Wines are always included and you do not have to purchase a beverage package. Now, the other thing you have to understand about these standards is these are just our standards, but we will be subject to the standards of every single country that we're going through. So we're gonna be subject to Portugal standards. On the Danube, we're uh, subject to four different countries' requirements, and we will adhere to those. Uh, we announced something about a month ago um, in an effort to give back to our wonderful frontline medical heroes. After all, who's gotten us through this incredible experience? So we are offering our medical heroes, doctors, nurses, pharmacists, lab technicians, all of those folks, a free cruise. Uh, as long as they have a companion, paying companion in the cabin with them, we will provide a complimentary cruise certificate. Currently, there are 3,700 applications in process for these free cruises. Please, if you have friends, if you have family, reach out to them, have them get back to Michael and his team, and let's make this happen for them. They've earned it. Let's show our respect and our love. Uh, love that picture of Dernstein looking down on the Danube because it's got that, those red tile roofs, you know, that's so signature along the, the rivers of Europe. Uh, little villages with all these red tile roofs and that one church spire right in the middle. And you you're look as you sail along a lot of these rivers and say, oh, it's just fairy tale villages. Well, the two gentlemen that wrote the fairy tales were called the Grimm brothers, and they simply illustrated their stories with where they lived. Uh, this is our signature cabin design on the majority of the ships that are operating on the Danube, the Rhine, uh, the Moselle, the French rivers. Um, this is called a twin balcony. A twin balcony actually has two balconies. This on the right is actually a French balcony, which was invented by Rudy. Uh, French balcony is sliding glass doors. It's not a step out balcony. Opens out onto the river, enjoy the scenery. Uh, these ships also have a step out balcony, but as you can see that balcony has to come into the cabin space. So that's why we only added six cabins when we went from 146 passengers up to our big ships of 156 passengers on the main rivers. Now the other folks chose at that time to go from 148 to 192 passengers, uh, ships of the same size. So here we have 210 to 235 square feet. All of our cabins on these rivers have the flat screen TV, Apple TV in every cabin. Um, I can introduce you to, let me see if I have it. Nope, I don't. Let me go back. Um, Rudy did design a new ship. Uh, we built it a couple years ago. She's called the Ama Magna. And instead of being 38 feet wide, which is the normal width of a river cruise ship, she's 72 feet wide. Now, the way, the area she can sail is from the bottom of the Mine Danube Canal 
from there, which is north of Vienna, all the way down to the Black Sea, because those locks were designed to hold two ships at a size, at a time side by side. So Rudy had the idea to build a bigger ship, wider ship. I call her a double wide. He's from Vienna, he doesn't get it. So here we have the comparison of what is a ship that is 32, 38 feet wide and 72 feet wide. This is a long ship on the left and these two ships carry the same number of passengers. So a quick blitz through, you have to understand that this ship actually has four restaurants. It has five wine bars. It has cabins that average 355 square feet. Floating vanities in the bathrooms, walk-in showers, separate water closets, seating area here with your Apple TV over here with your keyboard under it, huge television above the bed there, and a wonderful balcony here. This ship is sailing the Danube all the way from Vilshofen, say Prague to Budapest, and also the, the other fabulous itinerary, which I call a, a road less traveled. It's going from Budapest down through five different countries to Bucharest, and then has an extension in Istanbul. So absolutely a road less traveled, less crowded, um, very, very scenic, and sometimes almost like stepping back into the 1990s, because some of these countries down there haven't, haven't recovered from their communist era the way, say, the Czech Republic and Hungary has. I have to mention the Christmas markets because this is the love of my life. I've done it seven times. I'm up for number eight this year. The Christmas markets are absolutely magical in Europe. They don't decorate a tree here and there. They decorate entire cities. This tradition goes back seven to 900 years. It's very much of a local thing. The locals are all out with their families. They're standing in front of these lovely little market stalls, sipping hot mulled wine or cider or hot chocolate. Um, you're smelling sausages roasting, nuts roasting, gingerbread. It's just absolutely incredible. Uh, Christmas markets open based on Advent around the 24th or 25th of November. You do not have to go over Christmas. As a matter of fact, Vienna, this is the main market in Vienna. There's actually five other markets in Vienna. And it opened last year on the 15th of November. And um, Budapest even opened before that. So we have a current promotion on Christmas markets. If you're interested for this year or for next year, the Christmas markets can be booked at $1,000 off per person, a category upgrade and a shipboard credit. And please understand with a deposit to hold a cabin with AMA Waterways, the deposit is $400 and there's absolutely nothing else due until 90 days from sailing. So if you booked Christmas markets this year for December 1, after that $400, you pay nothing until the fall. And same for next year. Or we opened our books early and we're open now for booking 2022. <sighs> okay, let's talk about the Doro. Now, this is a different destination. This is a river that is often sunk, sunken way down with very steep hillsides, covered with fabulous vineyards and areas. But this destination is different in that we're not going to be able to pull into these ports 
they're not even going to be cities and towns. They're going to be smaller places like monasteries and vineyards, and they're not going to be hugging the riverbanks because the riverbank is so steep. This is also the only destination in Europe that we have that does not have bicycles on board, if that gives you an idea. So it is a different terrain. When we dock the ship, we will transfer you by motor coach to get to these destinations. It's a delightful itinerary that you've chosen here on the Douro River. It includes, of course, uh, a pre package in Lisbon, which is a fabulous city that's not to be missed. And it's going to do different ports in each direction, including Salamanca and Vega Torón, as well as Porto, which is that fabulous city we saw on the first slide. Um, it is the oldest wine region in the world. You can see, you can see these rolling hills here. So we're going to have gorgeous scenery and the, the Portuguese culture is so gracious. It's incredible. The value of a river cruise is just amazing because no matter what river you're going on, you're only going to unpack that suitcase one time. Basically, you're going to treat the hotel like a floating hotel, a floating luxury hotel, slide that suitcase under the bed, and not worry about it until you get off the ship at the end of the cruise. So smaller ships, even more so on this river. Now the ships on the Rhine, the Main, the Danube, the Mosul, those are 148 or 156 passengers. The two ships we have on the Douro are only 104 and 106 passengers. So you dock and you walk off. This is no tendering. This is no waiting in lines. And there's also no sense of motion on a river cruise. Lisbon, fabulous, fabulous city. I had a, a, a gentleman friend who was a young travel writer and he wrote that his first trip to Lisbon was so amazing that when he decided to go back, he was really worried that it wouldn't live up to his expectation. Well, he got there and it said it delivered beyond that expectation. He adores the city of Lisbon. Sintra, this fabulous palace. The colors of this are just absolutely gorgeous. So you get to spend the day in Sintra. Porto, oh, what a beautiful town. These signature little boats here that ply the rivers. Um, very, very different. Again, see how it crawls up the hill on both sides. So incredible. Again, there's the river way down there. So very, very different. Vineyards like you've never seen before. I had a friend who did this. I have not done this itinerary. She said, and, and she's been with us 13 years, she said it was the most beautiful destination she's ever been to. She absolutely adored it. Again, there's the river way down there. Look at those vineyards. Some of them are so steep. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, Regula, beautiful little towns, monasteries. You're going to experience uh, small uh, vineyards, small monasteries. You're going to experience the wines. Matus. You know what this brings to mind? I'll be showing my age here, but I'm not sure about you, but I think the first wine I learned to drink was one called Matus. It's a very signature bottle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So much for that story. <laughs> um, some of the vineyards going to see, and there's scenery here. You're having a wine tasting looking at this. It's just amazing. Uh, wine cellars. We're going to visit wine cellars. You'll have tastings, of course. Uh, a lot of these are very exclusive. We do all small, gr small groups, so it's not going to be hordes of people experiencing this. Our welcome aboard is always very special. Uh, we're giving every lady a long stem red rose. We have a delightful uh, experience to gather before dinner, and then, of course, um, the, the five-course dinners as well. Little bit more contemporary design and decor on these vessels, but again, still that country club casual and extremely comfortable. Uh, also, some pretty great views that you'll have out of your cabins. The lounge, 
a little more contemporary than our other ships, but again, country club casual. That's the way we dress, as well as the decor on our ships. Main dining room, delightful. Uh, this, ven this ship also has an alfresco dining experience as well. There's, uh, lots of opportunity for outside dining here. Um, we often will have on our wine cruises a wine pair dinner where we serve a different wine at every course of dinner. The hosted wine cruises have a wine host on board doing lectures and tastings and doing a paired wine dinner and going with us to the vineyards and the wine cellars. But Portugal is one of those very, very wine focused itineraries like Bordeaux. So you really do not need to make it a hosted wine cruise. We'll have entertainment at night. Of course, here it's going to be this fabulous flamenco dancers, um, which you will get to see and experience. And we have a pool up on that top deck as well. So absolutely delightful. Um, you're in for a real treat on this itinerary. It is at the top of my list. Uh, and I so wish I'd already done it, but I'll get there. Now, I got to do our new destination. We have just announced this is a cruise on the Nile. This is going to be our third exotic destination. We have one exotic destination where we do Africa on a 14 passenger ship on the Chobe River. And we do four nights on the ship and then two nights at Victoria Falls. We also have a fabulous itinerary in Southeast Asia going to Cambodia and Vietnam experiencing all of that culture, those people, the beautiful scenery along the way. And it absolutely, my only description of my Mekong trip was it was astounding, it was powerful, and it was nothing short of life changing. And I've done Africa twice. So put it on your list. So our new destination, which seems to be on everybody's radar is Egypt. Well, Egypt, you don't just pop onto the Nile River and do a seven night cruise and then go home. Uh, Egypt, you need to do pre and post in Cairo. So just like with all of our pre and post packages, Alma Waterways will have a cruise manager accompanying you on the whole thing, not just the river cruise. So our lodging for the first three nights in Cairo will be at none other than the fabulous Four Seasons Hotel. Then we're going to spend seven nights on the Amadalia. We will do everything. We will do Luxor. We'll do Ashwan. We'll do Queen Nefertari's tomb. We'll do the Sphinx and the pyramids. And then we'll go back for one night at Cairo. And even on the back night back in Cairo, I mean, the presidential palace is the go place to go in Cairo. But we're, we're just not going to take you to the presidential palace. We're going to have lunch in the presidential palace. So brand new ship under construction here, premiering in September of 2021. The Amadalia, named for a flower in Egypt, is being designed, been designed by Rudy. She is only 34 staterooms. That means her total capacity is 68 people. Her crew will number 62 people. We will also have an Egyptologist who will accompany every single group of 20 and will stay with you the whole time. She's going to have beautiful sun deck with that gorgeous pool, beautiful shaded areas as well. Um, that lobby and that lounge are going to be amazing. Um, and just like all of our river cruises, you don't just pop in and do the Nile seven night cruise. We offer you a pre and a post offering. I don't have a slide on. Uh, one of the pre packages is three nights in Dubai, which is a fabulous shopping city and everything else, or four nights in Petra, in Jordan, going to Amman. Oh, fabulous. 
But my favorite thing is the post-cruise package, which goes for four nights in the Waldorf Astoria Hotel in Jerusalem. So you will experience the Dead Sea, you will go to Masada, you will experience all the sights and wonders of Jerusalem. So that's our Egypt product that is booking like crazy already. And I expect Michael to announce any day now his group plans for the Nile. I always wrap up my presentations with three slides. The first one is near and dear to my heart because it's attributed to Buddha. And I so fell in love with that Buddhist culture in Southeast Asia. It's gracious, it's welcoming, it's cheerful and forgiving. I would have stolen the quote no matter who said it, but the trap fact that it's attributed to Buddha means more to me. But I think Buddha speaks to every one of us when he says, the trouble is you think you have time you know you're always going to feel this good. You know you're always going to be able to travel with your kids, your grandkids, your nieces, and your nephews. Anybody have a friend who thought they, thought they had time and they didn't? So you can always make more money. You can't always make more memories. And if this experience we're going through has taught us anything, it's the value of family and friends. And nothing will make memories better than traveling with them. Take a teenager or a preteen to the Han Frank house. Go sit in courtroom 600 where the Nuremberg trials happen. Take them to the concentration camp outside of Prague. You think they get an education in school? Go make some memories that'll last longer than you do. So Mr. Carson from Downton Abbey said it best when he said, the business of life is the acquisition of memories. So that. I'm telling you, please go out there and make some. If you don't, nail it down for this year, nail it down for 2021 or 22, and put it on your, your calendar. So we are going back to Michael. Wow, Kathy, thank you very nice much. That was a great presentation as always. We've done several of them live together, haven't we? This is the first time we've done a virtual presentation together. Right. But we got it worked out. Um, it's great to see uh, everybody here. And uh, if you have any questions for Kathy or myself, um, please unmute yourself and ask. Um, you can also just shoot me an email or you can type in the chat box. Uh, I am going to put in this chat box if you can see it, just a, hi Nancy, a, um, a link to the website where we have our, our information on our, um, our departure of the, the, um, just got me thinking about Egypt. <laughs> so the departure, <laughs> the departure of flavors of Portugal and Spain, which we have, um, still some space on, I believe I was waiting on some answers, but we're going in April of 2021 and we have the three days uh, in Lisbon before and the three days post included in that where we go all the way we end up in Madrid uh, after the at the end of the cruise so it should be very exciting and I want to post that in here for everywhere so if you see in your chat box there's a link you can click uh, you can of course just go to our website MGA travel um, look under our featured trips or uh, Graham tours, and you will see that that is listed. Um, that trip is listed, and Kelly and I are um, slated to go on that trip, and so are a couple people on this call, actually. Um, if there's no other questions, we always promise to uh, keep it uh, sweet and short. And uh, if you think of anything or um, something pops in the moment we end the meeting, just just let us know. And um, thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us. We, we love these little travel talks. And um, they're always a great way to find out something new and more uh, about products we've we've been on. I, I've Kelly and I were on Ama Waterways most recently on the Seine River in uh, the Seine River in France and uh, what a great trip to Normandy and what a great 
job. Well, what a different what appreciation I had this year for um, for D-Day. Yeah. I mean, what a completely different appreciation, having stood at the ceremony cemetery, having stood on the beaches and seen the vast distance that they had to overcome in order to secure that. And you're exactly right, Kathy. There's no school book that could have ever taught me that. Point to Hawk. I mean, and that, and 70, 76th is coming up this week. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Amazing. All right. Well, guys, thank you very much for attending and uh, always good to see all of you. Good to see you, Kathy. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate your expertise and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Okay. Think beyond. Thank you. <laughs>